Hey, what's up you guys? Yes, I'm Christina. Welcome back to my channel. And today I want to talk about philodendron. Because we know that we all love our philodendron and these are very popular houseplants. Not uh, only the rare ones, but also the more common ones. Not only now, but I think ever since the 16th or 17th century, because it was then when uh, people started to collect those. Not people, but adventurers. And ever since we have them in our homes and uh, we love them as houseplants. So I have about, I don't know, maybe 20 philodendron in my collection. And today I want to share them all with you guys. Before we get into this video, consider liking this video and maybe lightly smashing the subscribe button. I would really appreciate it. And now let's get going with the video. First off, some basic knowledge. Philodendron are epiphytes and they belong to the family of aeroids. So um, they are either climbing up trees or crawling across the floor. And uh, whenever they climb up trees, attach their aerial roots to the bark and then uh, grow bigger as they climb up the trees. Usually they are native to the Caribbean or South America. That's where you can find them. Um, uh, there's very tropical climate, so that's what they love. High humidity and also a lot of air and wind flow. But enough of that, let's start with the plants, shall we? So first off, I have all my plants around me here, so I can grab them easily. Um, yeah, let's start with a recent um, acquisition. It's this Lodendron El Red. I will put all the names somewhere here below. And uh, yeah, I love this one very much. It has beautiful big leaves, but uh, with this one in particular, I have some issues because the new leaves, they come in ripped because they rip themselves. And I have a new leaf right here. I hope you can see it. Um, they come in a really, really dark red. I think that's why they're called El Choco Red. But um, it's very beautiful and also the petiole is very red. But somehow the leaves kind of rip themselves while coming out. And I hate it. <laughs> well, what can you do? Maybe the next one will be better. So this is our first contender, the Philodendron El Chico Red. Next on the list. I think uh, this one a lot of people also have already seen. It's the Philodendron Birken. Um, I wouldn't say it's a classic, but it got really popular last year, I think. And I kind of didn't want to have one. Now I have one because they were on sale and then I got one. Um, yeah, they are nice. I don't love it particularly, but I just got this pot because there was also this plant in there which is also a birkin but as you see it's the variegated one but it's actually not variegated it's just reverted so this is the actual um, green leaf of the plant and then this white specks right here are the birkin features um, so it can lose these if it goes all green then you are back to square one but I kind of like the weird looking leaves when they are half white half green and then this one was actually nice, but it's kind of ripped. So let's see if this keeps going. If not, I might sell these. I don't know. Um, maybe I come to love them more with time. Um, but for now, I'm just kind of ignoring it, which is nice because most of the philodendron are actually not very care intensive. So you can forget about them. They do well in low light and kind of kind of highlight maybe not direct light but highlight and uh, they don't need water that often most of the time this one really doesn't need a lot of water and it can go a little bit dry it has really big leaves I think that's why but yeah so you can just forget about it and it does fine let's get the big boys out of the way shall we I have this right here so what you see here, ignore this, I'm kind of air layering this one 
And I also treating trips like not on this one particularly. It's more um, a precaution. But this is the philodendron varicosum, and I have it climbing up this pole. So I think it really likes it. Um, when I got it, it had really big leaves, but I guess because I'm not in a greenhouse and I don't have perfect conditions, the leaves got a little bit smaller. Um, here, I think I had it in too much low light and then I put it back into high light and the leaves started getting bigger again. And what's nice with this, it's a velvet leaf, so that's nice. And also, whoops. It has really nice red backsides or red reddish brown backsides which is also very pretty. It fades over time so the older leaves are kind of green but when they are fresh in like this top one they are really nice and brown. So this is one of my faves and I believe it's the varicosum rojo, rojo, I don't know. I put it down here, um, ro rojo form, and yeah, I don't know. There are really a lot of different varicosum um, varieties, I would say, not species, varieties. Um, yeah, and I believe I have two in my collection. So let's get on with this one, shall we? <laughs> A little baby because I got it um, and it had root rot and then it almost died and then I uh, took some cuttings and one of them lived so I have saved the plant successfully. This is my teeny tiny baby varicosum and I believe it's a different kind of varicosum because the stem is not as red and uh, also the leaf shape is a little bit different. It's also lighter in color. It might be because it's not mature yet and this one is way all older, but I think it's a different variety actually. Also, when they are young, they don't have really prominent red backsides. Um, yeah, but I'm really happy <laughs> I managed to save it because um, yeah, it would have been uh, money down the drain. So we have our little baby right here. It has another leaf coming right now, so I think it's doing really well. Next up, let's continue. Oh yeah, we need to talk about this. So, this right here <laughs> looks terrible. It's my Philodendron Brantianum. And as you can see, I have the same issues like everyone else. I believe everyone has those issues. The leaves are, there are some leaves that come in okay, they unfurl and look nice and then there's uh, like one nice leaf and then one crippled leaf and then again one nice leaf, one crippled leaf. I don't know why because I actually have like 50 to 60 percent humidity all of the time in here so I think that should be enough but I guess it isn't and yeah so this one is a really nice leaf, it's the freshest leaf, like we have these and they are really nice and sparkly when they come out. It's really pretty to look at, I actually do love it, but then we have, yeah, we have this leaf for example, which looks terrible, and then this one also terrible, and then down here we also have some fresh leaves that look not so nice and they just don't unfurl properly. If I would have known that this plant is so difficult <laughs> to keep nice, I probably wouldn't have got it. Um, now that I have it, I will care for it and I'll tr I'm trying my best, but it's apparently not enough for this plant. Good, so let's move on with the next plant. Um, I think most of people know this one. It's a favorite for many people. It's the Philodendron melanocrysum and it also has velvet leaves. I know we all love our velvet leaves um, so it's really nice to the touch and I like to touch my plants a lot so this is nice. Uh, it has a dark green brown color. Uh, the leaves come in a really nice golden brown color which is very pretty and this one is uh, 
actually got to me as a one leaf cutting so this was the first leaf and then it got all of these and recently it kind of also didn't unfurl properly I don't know why but I had enough of it and then I just chopped it so you can see here I just chopped it and uh, I'm hoping for some new growth that will hopefully be better and also I have some props so that's nice uh, yeah so this is the philodendron melanocrysum so much it's kind of overwhelming <laughs> um, okay let's take a common beauty uh, mine is not much of a beauty because it's constantly kind of dying and I don't know why because this is actually um, a philodendron hedevaceum and I got this one from the grocery store I believe like two and a half years ago and meanwhile I mean I had it in the beginning it was fine it was really nice it was growing a lot it was getting big I had like I don't know it was really long and full and luscious and then I think I overwatered or something and the roots started to rot and um, ever since I have issues with this these are some strands that I tried to save I cut and propagated them but in my experience my um, philodendron hydrogatium they don't take well to soil because I propagated in water and after transferring them into soil they almost all died because of rot and I don't know what to do I have it in a little bit of higher light right now because this seemed to help the leaves are all kind of floppy I don't know if I can save this one it's slowly dying I believe and it I mean it gets new leaves um, but it's not looking too hot so it's a shame that this regular old philodendron heart-shaped leaf philodendron I can't keep alive somehow I don't know what I did to you to deserve this but maybe I should just try to get a new one and move on you know but I'm not giving up on a plant so it's not an option so next plan let's take this beautiful boy so you probably also heard of this as well this is a philodendron gloriosum and it is beautiful and the best thing is it's getting a new leaf you see this it's gorgeous I can't wait to open and this is actually a top cutting that I got from someone who lives near me I picked it up locally and yeah so this is the first leaf in my care that it's getting and I think it had thrips when it arrived so I treated it that's why this leaf is kind of look looking a little bit beat up um, but it's still on there so I think that's good it still can provide energy to the plant um, and I hope that the new one will be a little bit more pretty it, I mean it's a little bit damaged it's not perfect it's to be expected the first leaf after cutting a plant is most of the time is not going to be perfect but I'm happy it's doing something it already had a pretty nice root system when I got it and it did not really take long to grow on so I'm very happy with this so one of my faves the gloriosum I have another more common philodendron as well um, it looks a little bit sad at the moment it's this philodendron Brazil and it's a variety of this heart-shaped leaf philodendron and it has um, light green stripes in the middle like so and so and when I got it it was really nice and full but again it kind of suffered root rot so I had to propagate save as much as I could then pot into a smaller pot because also you know the soil from grocery stores and some garden centers isn't the best so I believe it's the soil's fault and that not mine but I just couldn't <laughs> handle this kind of soil and then the humidity in it so I repotted it into my own soil and ever since it's doing great it pushes a ton of new leaves this one is really gorgeous and I also have some propagations going 
it's those little guys and they are doing fine also pushing new leaves this one is very pretty i love it it also has like a brown rosy touch to it because i think it's in a lot of light and then they get really nice also has new leaves here so i think i got the hang of it but in the beginning i had some issues with it as well i don't know what it is that i can't keep those easy plants alive it's kind of frustrating okay and now move to something very spicy i have here a philodendron pink princess and as you can see it's not very pink so we have this one leaf here that is really nice but other than that as you can see hopefully these are all green and there's maybe like some speckles on there but not a lot it's really not much pink so i was really surprised to see this half pink leaf i don't know where it came from uh, the next leaf that came out has almost no pink again so i'm waiting for the next leaf to see if we will get some pink again and this is actually um i think oh yeah this this was my mother plant i cut it down here and propagated it to maybe stimulate some more pink and i have a few of the propagations here um yeah they are also very green and not very pink they have like one good leaf at most you see there is some pink left but it's not really coming out i think this one is actually the best that i produced so we have this kind of pink leaf here and then there are some speckles and also here in the newest leaf we have some pink um, so it's not gone but it's also not great it's not what i imagined when i wanted to have a pink princess and i think it's a lot of time that's the case for people who want pink princesses and then you order it online you don't see the actual plant and then that's what you get so you're kind of frustrated this one leaf here is one of the original leaves um it's really nice sectoral pink but um, other than that everything that came after um, also doesn't have a lot of pink it's like really the tiniest tiniest speckles if at all so i don't know i have them in really high light right now uh, in hopes that it would promote a little bit more pink um, for now it's working so so something that is more my taste because it has really good genetics and it's exactly what i hope for and it's this philodendron white princess uh, as you can see it has really nice white sectoral variegation and then also some nice speckles uh, and they are evenly distributed throughout the leaves um, it's also getting a new leaf right here and i got it as a top cutting with like five notes or something wasn't particularly cheap but the genetics are really good so i think it's worth it and since it was so many uh, nodes i was kind of greedy and thought i might propagate it as well because the roots were already really nice and i wanted to pot it up from perlite into soil um, so i took the opportunity and cut one node off with one leaf it was kind of tricky because the nodes are very close to each other um, so you have to be careful to not cut the leaf off so it can produce more energy for the cutting um, but it worked really well and it also already has two new growth points um, in there so i'm really happy i didn't kill either the top cutting or this cutting and now i have two nice plants so that's a win for me and yeah the leaf is very nice and minty and it's just gorgeous i can't wait for the next sprouts to get bigger leaves and to see how they look and it's very exciting i think we are nearing the end so let's take this one which is kind of out of the row of all of these it's this philodendron tartan and 
it kind of looks like a palm it has those dainty leaves and I kind of come to love it it was an impulse buy but I don't know I think it's cool it's uh, also growing right now and the new leaves I'm telling you they look crazy I, they just look like I don't know intestines aliens I don't know it's really crazy and it looks so cool when they unfurl and they have nice rosy petioles like you can see here and then here is the new growth point where it will continue growing and I think it will also um, grow climbing so I will have to give it a pole eventually I love it I really like it it's very pretty yeah, it's kind of strange and I like kind of strange plants so philodendron tortum this is also relatively new to my collection it's a philodendron splendid and it already reached the top of the pole so I think I either need to cut it or to give it a longer pole and it's also very velvety and this is a cross between philodendron verrucosum and philodendron uh, melanochrysum so it has this dark green color of the melanochrysum and in my opinion like the veining of the verrucosum also the red back sides and yeah it's growing really well for me so it got I think those two leaves in my care and then here's the third one Oops. Um, it's currently still in moss as you can see and the roots are looking really good um, I will probably need to repot this soon yeah um, also a climber very happy to climb around here um, yeah I'm really pleased with this one so philodendron splendid let me get the last one and favorite of a lot of people I think as well is this philodendron micans and the micans I actually have two pots full of it um, I love it to death I really really love it to death it's doing so well you don't need to do a lot it's just sitting there and I sometimes water it um, and it's just a nice trailing beautiful plant I really love trailing plants the new leaves they come in this dark brown color and it's just so nice it's also velvety so it's really nice to touch them it's very shiny when the sun hits the leaves it looks gorgeous I have to say like chef's kiss it's really glistening in the sun and I love it it's a gorgeous plant um, I wouldn't want to trade this for anything in the world and you can take a lot of cuttings of it so I always have some micans propagations going because I mean you can just cut it it really is not noticeable if you cut this big of a plant and um, yeah it will just grow again and I think this is a very nice inexpensive philodendron um, you can get it at online shops here in Germany sometimes even in garden centers it's becoming more uh, visible in those too so this is nice have it in this cute pot and I love it very much as far as propagation goes I feel like uh, they are fairly easy to propagate so either in water or directly in moss or perlite I think it works for all of them I have issues with the Hederatium as I said and uh, I also had issues with the Verrucosum I don't know it just does not want to root for me but recently I oops, um, had some issues with thrips so if you have thrips on your Verrucosum it might look like this or this the leaves get yellow and die um, yeah it's not looking great so I decided because I have the other big one anyways I can just cut this one up completely and then treat it as those little one leaf cuttings it's kind of more easy than the whole plant um, but they are not really rooting a lot um, 
only the top cutting is rooting a lot and yeah but I can already see uh, new growth points like popping out so maybe it first puts out the growth point and then the roots come afterwards um, sometimes plants do that maybe I can show you for example right here you can see the po growth point is already popping out and I think it will uh, be fine the cutting is also really firm nothing squishy and I think we will see some nice new growth out of these so that is that and this concludes the video uh, that's all from me and from my philodendron collection in general I think philodendron are easy house plants if you know the general basics of house plant parenting and they can take a drought most of the times and also um, take a little bit of a lower light condition uh, don't get me wrong they like more light like every plant because it gives them more energy to grow but they can handle a little bit of a lower light um, no direct light as most of our house plants and um, yeah they are all very pretty they are all very individual so uh, you have seen they all look different and they all have their special features that make them unique and uh, it's really nice to be collecting them and um, might be an issue but it's also really nice okay this concludes my video uh, this was all of my philodendron collection i hope you enjoyed it and i hope you enjoy your plans as well until next time bye